Okay, hi again, everybody. Welcome to the second of uh, 10 Minutes with an Artist uh, series where we go into artist studios and find out what uh, work in progress they are uh, working on currently. Our guest today is Canadian artist Susan Schumann, who. Hi. Hi, that's her there. Susan studied at the Musée des Beaux Arts in Montreal, I believe. She got a BFA in, with distinction from Concordia University. She works as an oil painter mainly, but she also has produced books that combine text and image. And she's very much a collaborative artist who works with a group of artists, particularly in America, Canada, and in Europe, on uh, a series called Seeking Carly and uh, an ongoing project, uh, a book about a book of death. Is that right, Susan? Yeah, a book about death, which the latest. Uh Exposition will be in Australia in October, so everybody should submit to that as well. Okay. And uh, she's kindly agreed to show us what she's working on. So, Susan, what do you have for us? Uh, well, it's a show and tell. I, I wanted to kind of show my past and where I'm going to so you get an idea of, of my process. So, uh, because I couldn't bring my computer into my studio, I brought parts of my studio into the computer. Yeah, into the computer room, yeah. So, what I have behind me um, is a piece entitled uh, Exodus, and that's from a series that I created called In Our Memories Forever. And I brought this piece um, to show you how I use fish, since fish seems to be my uh, symbolism that links all my paintings and artwork um, since the beginning of my career. Uh, I thought this would be a great example to show you um, how I've incorporated and what the symbolism means. This piece entitled uh, Exodus has to do with immigration from 1900 of my grandparents to uh, North America. And what I represented here were three individuals um, kind of in cutout shapes like paper dolls uh, because my memory of my grandparents, my grandmother would make me paper dolls so it's something that stuck in my mind as I was creating this piece. Um, I chose three men uh, who had to make that decision to immigrate to leave the country and um, the fish are the vehicle that I use uh, they represent uh, immigration, they represent changing uh, from one dimension to another, they represent the sperm of generations, uh, they're fluid, they flow, the colors, um, and how I use them here, um, they became, th these individuals became tattooed people. And the person on the extreme left, uh, the fish are in a frenzy, as opposed to the person on the uh, right, who the fish are more ghost-like. He's going to be leaving the country, coming to North America. The fish are the ghost uh, lineage that he's bringing with him to the new country. Uh, this person here, the fish just want to get out. They want to be free, but he's stuck living in Russia, and he will not escape. And the person in the middle uh, is undecided. Um, this, this is a great example of my use of fish. It's almost uh, a meditative kind of process when I'm painting them. I use oil paint, I use liquid to create layers. Um, and the color red, which is um, a color I use in all my work, um, I find it very rich and um, you know, creates the texture that I'm looking for. So I thought this would be a, a good place to start. And then I thought I would show you another example uh, from that series. Because you might look at that and say, um, you know, you don't really, I don't know if you could see it all, you don't really see. Is that, is that better there? Or is that better there? Hmm. I don't that's good. That's good. Um, you might say you don't really see the fish, 
Um, but the thing is, the suitcase, here I can do this. This suitcase is completely full of fish. And basically, the fish represent the collective memory that he's bringing with him. I'm very um, aware or, or thinking about constantly about co collective consciousness, collective memory. And in all my pieces, that's something, as I'm painting, I'm constantly thinking about, imagining. And um, in this particular piece, he's coming to America with the only thing he knows his memories, and that's in the suitcase. And um, and again, um, in this case, the the lay the thickness of the uh, the fish are not as uh, obvious as in the other piece. Uh, and I have that in all my paintings. I may start with uh, a, a base, and I'm, I'm drawing the fish, and eventually the fish start to disappear. But it, it's still. Uh, obvious in all of my work. So that, that's another example. And um, one more in that thing that I wanted to show. If you can see, is that one completely? Um, the a Whoops, oh, it's this way. Okay. Um, this is the same series. This is my grandparents as I knew them. So everything else was pretend imaginary based on writing, based on journaling, based on reading. And this is how I really knew them. They were much older. And in this particular piece, the whole background here is fish. And um, it's the sea of fish swimming from one country to another. And um, this statue in the front is actually a statue that was in their house that's over, I guess, 150 years old. It's, it's a real dog statue. And um, I think, you know, the colors here and the textures and the whole process of painting with oil is something um, that is part of what I appreciate about oil painting, about the traditional tools, you know, to be able to feel the paint, to feel the strokes, to see how the paintbrush has um, touched, uh, it becomes alive. That's what oil painting is for me. Now, if we fast forward to the 21st century and the digital age, um, I'm still doing oil painting, but what I'm trying to do is incorporate oil painting and Photoshop. And I think what I'd like to do is show you, and of, and of course the fish are always remaining there. And I brought out an example to, to show you. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Um, in this case here, which was done for a mount analog. It incorporates oil painting and illustration and Photoshop. And um, to give you an idea how that happens, is that's my illustration. Mm -hmm. And that happens to be a character named Fish on mount analog. And that's done in, uh, in uh, markers. Very, very, very finely. And then this is an image done in oil sticks and pastel. Based on, I'm not sure where it's going to go at that particular point. And here is the other image based on. Uh, my imagination of the forest, and uh, it's also done in oil stick and pastels and Conte. And then what I do is combine it all together in Photoshop. And this has given me a whole new uh, vehicle for creating. Um, 
a new level of art that I never even imagined before. Um, another example would be this one, which combines illustration, uh, oil stick, painting, uh, Photoshop, and uh, it, it all relates to memory because uh, it's based on other things that I'm doing at the same time. And um, it's almost a moment in time that uh, I create. If you look at this one, this is, this is the initial drawing, which is oil stick mm -hmm. and pencil. Mm -hmm. So um, I think this is, again, to give you an idea, the top part there is oil painting, and the bottom is uh, line drawing and then Photoshop. Um, mm -hmm. What I it's given me a, a new perspective of uh, how to grow as an artist. Um, traditionally, oil painting was the only um, medium I thought I would love, but I have to say that I, I like the mix up and the mash up of the two the two things. Uh, what I plan to do uh, in the future, actually, what I'm working on now is I'm designing uh, cells or uh, images for the, uh, the new art mystery comics as we speak. And what I'm going to be doing is oil paintings based on those images. So I'm kind of like reversing it. So I'm going to be doing actually an oil painting of digital. So I'm doing the reverse of what I've always been doing. I'm taking it a step further. Um, and if you say, where are the fish? Well, the fish will be around the ball on top there. Okay. <laughs> I have to keep them in somewhere. So um, it, this whole process is, is enhancing, I think, my painting and, and uh, uh, my experience. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd say um, I'm reinterpreting my art. Right. Well, that was great, Susan. Thanks very much for that. Um, I'll open the floor to questions from our other guests in a minute. But uh, my first question that springs to mind. Uh, oh, by the way, I just wanted to point out that over my shoulder here, okay. there, I can. is Susan's a painting by Susan called Scales of Love, so, okay. which she kindly sent to us last year as part of a collaboration with a project I was doing in Chicago. So. And it has a fish, and it has red colors in it. It has red. And you know what? That project made me think about fish even further. Right. And there's so many layers to uh, the iconography and the alphabet that uh, I guess I just have to own it and accept it and, and play. Right. So what um, particular influences do you think you're aware of in your choice of symbolism, because your, your work is highly symbolic and it seems to work in a tradition of that kind of symbolic, ma mainly 20th century tradition of symbolic painting. I mean, are there any particular influences that you're proud to own? Um, well, I did a lot of research into the fish icon as I was painting it when I was doing this original series in Our Memories Forever. Um, and it, th there's so many levels to it. I mean, when I was doing that series, I was focusing on um, you know, the fish icon being a Christian uh, image that um, when people were converting to Christianity, they, they would do that image and it would show that they were a convert. Uh, I was thinking about uh, how in the Jewish religion, the eye, sorry, the fish eye is always open, always seen. Uh, I've read a lot of, of Jung and I, I'm very involved in dreams and spirituality. So I mean, I've, I've taken the fish symbolism to every level possible. I've taken it to, you know, fishing with my father. Uh, and for your, your project, uh, I, I thought about that too a lot because I used to fish with him a lot. I used to look at the scales, I used to look at the color scales. The fish almost have, you know, the color. The scales are the shapes of fish, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And, and the colors are, are beautiful in the way the fish can flow from dimensions, from parallel universes, immigration, 
Uh, I was thinking of scales for music. You know, I mean, it just crosses a whole a whole universe. Right. And for me, when I'm drawing them, painting them, it's almost a meditation. In other words, if I'm not sure what I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing fish or, you know, it's almost a signature. It's become just something mm -hmm. my hand likes to do. What about visual artists? Were any particular visual artists that you... Uh, so There's so many. I mean, uh, I love Dali, you know. I mean, he was the person I wish I could have been, you know, all his landscapes, his portraits, his dreams, his alchemy. I mean, you know, that that's mm -hmm. that was my idol in the beginning, but then slowly it was Chagall, and slowly I uh, it was more the feeling that, that came out of a work as opposed to it being perfectly, you know, perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's so many. I mean, Chagall? Car Pardon? Chagall? Oh, Chagall. Yes, I, I researched him a lot and his iconography and, and his colors. And, you know, in the beginning, I thought, you know, he didn't paint so well. You know, he wasn't like Dali. He wasn't, you know, accurate in his reproduction. But mm -hmm. the more I, I learned about him, it was more about feeling and emotion. And I think that's, that's what I like to do is to evoke some kind of emotion out of my work, you know. Mm -hmm whether it's the one I intended to put out or the one that somebody interpreted. It doesn't matter, but as long as, you know, I, I get some kind of uh, communication and dialogue. Right. Well, I have other questions, but first I'll, allow, I'll, I'll ask uh, other people if they have anything they'd like to ask Susan about anything they've seen from the studio today. Patricia? Well, I'm particularly interested, Susan, you were talking about um, using your journal as part of your process and um, the narrative impulses behind that as well. Is this something that you were always aware of doing? Did you, did you start with the word or start with the image Do you, when you think back to your original sort of creative process? Both. It, it kind of happened simultaneously. I've always kept journals and written, you know, everything that I could think of. Uh, when I'm not as much now because I seem to be using the computer more. It's, it's, it's changed a bit. I mean, I'm still writing and drawing in a book of some kind. It's just not as organized as it used to be. You know, I had big black journals. And uh, basically any idea that I thought of, I would, I would write, sketch, leave, you know, cut something out, stick it there. It, it didn't really matter. Um, but that was the process. And I really liked the experience of writing about something. Like, in other words, if I have a painting or while I'm drawing a painting or thinking of a painting, I, I'm analyzing, not analyzing, I'm, I'm creating the story. You know, I'm saying, oh, I'm going to put this, this represents that. Um, you know, like in the case of my grandparents, it, it was like, um, you know, the statue represents this. Uh, you know, that statue will be here long, you know, after they're gone. And, you know, the fish are this and, you know, immigrate. It becomes a whole fairy tale or it becomes my my story. So any piece that I paint or draw, it's stamped in the sense of my memory. There's, there's notes somewhere in a journal. Um, I know exactly kind of what was happening at that moment. To me, it goes together, you know. I know some people don't do it, you know, they like what they paint or draw. And, and that's it. That's fine. But I, I love the process of the words. Like, it, it's important to me. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. And I, I hope that you and Philip might allow us to use this video as um, something for our journal and sketchbook class, actually, where we're trying to get students to think across the boundaries of writing and drawing and painting. A hundred percent. I think initially you think that maybe your words aren't worthwhile. You know, if somebody's writing in a journal, and like, why? What's the point? But it's even auto, also automatic writing. You just, you know, uh, you're just writing. Your your consciousness is just open to writing, and and you don't know what you're going to be able to glean from there at some point. And say that. I mean, I have so many ideas that I've written down that sometimes I go back in journals, just say, oh, what was happening? I go, wow, that was that was really good, but. You know, God, like, how are you supposed to do everything, you know? It, it's a lot of fun. I, I love I love that. I mean, my daughter also even is doing journal writing, too. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's very cool. It's a great exercise to create. 
Thank you. Uh, Susan, uh, I was going to ask, um, I know I became aware of your work and we've, we've done some collaborations in the, in the past, but back in 2009 I became aware of your work and then um, through social media we, we've more or less kept in touch ever since. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about uh, how much um, the idea of social media and collaborating with people has, has come into your, your work. Well, I think it gives you the courage to try more things. Even doing this hangout, right, is trying new technologies that if we didn't have social media, we wouldn't even be here talking. So I think the, the ability to connect with other people around the world is key. And it's key, whether you're an artist, a musician, a writer, uh, to share ideas and to collaborate. I think, I think the great thing is to meet so many styles of creative people and to be able to get inspired from those people. And I think it also uh, encourages uh, a dialogue between each other and puts you on to a new level. It raises your awareness of what's happening in the world on many levels. and you end up connecting and doing projects that um, you know are amazing to work with just like we're doing the uh, art mysteries together I wouldn't be doing that if it wasn't for Facebook so, in fact people should come see us in Boston <laughs> at the Comic Con <laughs> in August I mean, I don't, I don't see how I would ever have been doing digital art if not for social media. I would never be doing digital. I would still be doing traditional painting or drawing. This all, the only reason I am doing the things I'm doing is because of somebody sending me an email in 2008 on Facebook to become a part of a book about death in New York City. That is the only reason I ever made that leap to the digital world. Because for me, it's always been a controversy. Like, you know, if you do digital, is it is it art? Is it not art? And uh, that, in 2008, it just, like, raised the bar. It raised the consciousness and took away the fear of, of not knowing what I was doing on many other, you know, mediums but at least try. And I think that's the great thing, is to just keep trying, um, just for the experience, the experience of talking to like-minded people, sharing, encouraging, uh, you know, getting excited. Uh, I mean, I'm excited being here and talking to, your, to you guys, and, and, you know, Patty, like, you're a writer, I never would have met you, and Philip, writer, teacher, artist, never would have met you. William, never would have met William. We're in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And this is just, you know, we're just four people here, and we all know how many people we've all met as a result of social media. I mean, mm -hmm. it's mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. I had a question about um, the work you've shown us, both the oil paintings that you put on the easel and the, uh, the digital work. I mean, what's the next step for, for either of those things? Are they, do, what are you going to do with the oil paintings? Are they, are they very much works in progress? Are they going to lead to new things? Do you... Do you have a home for them already, a destination? Uh, well, they may be in an exhibition in October, so I'll be finding out about that soon. Um, they, they may have a home. They have a home. They're mine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that, that I have, um, well, that's a series that, that also I had done, like, uh, handmade books at the time. So it, it's online. People could buy mm -hmm. it. I, right. mean, uh, I, think, I think what I'm going to be doing as I said, is doing, um, as I'm doing the digital, I'll be doing more oil painting, but of digital images, digital collaged images that I've created, you know, and then adding my own style to those digital images, but, but trying a different slant and very, they'll be very large, maybe four by six feet paintings. That, that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay. You know? Uh, size matters in oil painting, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think. How big is the studio? We couldn't actually get in there because of a few uh, technical problems, but how big is it? Uh, 
Yeah, I have. Uh, well, I have two rooms. I have one room that's I don't know. I guess twelve feet, I guess, or eight feet. Twelve or eight feet, and that's my oil painting room. Um, mm -hmm. And it, that's all I do in there. I have this easel is there. If you, this easel is a real. It's old. It's got paint dripping all over it. Excellent. Um, yeah, it, it's like, and I got this from one of my teachers many years ago, and so it has a, a good feeling to it. And the other room, I basically have a Stonehenge paper, you know, 12 feet, well, 8 feet rolls, and basically draw on the walls. That's basically what's in that room. I mean, I've, I have um, markers, pens, Every, I have an art supply store in here. You know, that's the problem when you're an artist. You go, you just get more things. You know, more pens, right. pencils, more yes, oil. I mean. In addition, one, one of the things uh, Patty and I mention a lot when we're doing these general sketchbook classes for the drawing is, um, you know, how and I think this is a something that comes from the old Chinese artists that there. Are, one of them said that there are three stages to learning how to become a painter, which is Drawing from painting from observation, painting from memory, painting from imagination. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a progression of those things. And you, well, let me ask you, which which of those three stages do you think you're at at the moment? I think I skipped to the third one. Right. <laughs> I think all my paintings are my imagination. I uh -huh. don't think I have one painting that is purely um, realistic. Uh, captures uh, is a reproduction of a moment. It it, it it may start off as a moment in time, but it ends up changing, and they end up, you know, changing as I'm painting them. You know? right. It becomes a story. Uh -huh. There's. I want to go back to your um, multimedia work, the digital and the painting, and all of this. It, um, as a writer, I'm constantly involved in the conversation about, you know, the death of the book with ebooks and all of this sort of stuff. And one of the things that I find particularly admirable about what you're doing is the tradition that you bring to this new media and that finding your way sort of back and forth, navigating between a very traditional sort of uh, way of working with this new, um, this newfangled technology at the same time. And I think that's particularly interesting because Sometimes I think with um, when people use a whole lot of technology in their art, sometimes it feels almost as though they're cheating a little. They've gotten away from, you know, yeah. the hand making, yeah. and it, it's so clear that your hand is still there. Well, um, it's interesting because I, I I know exactly what you're saying because in the beginning when I was doing something digitally, it was like, oh my God, this isn't fair. This this is cheating. You know, it's this fill in this, and all of a sudden I've got this beautiful smooth area that I couldn't do if my life depended on it, right? And it was like, like, I really was conflicted. You know, it seemed too easy for certain little pieces, right? And that's why I like to combine the both, to get the texture of the oil paint um, and to uh, combine the, the technology of Photoshop, you know? And the other thing is that when I'm doing the Photoshop, I mean, I don't know if it's me, but I'm, I'm using my mouse. I'm not using um, a pen. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, to draw. I feel like you know, I, uh, it's adding another layer of my hand being connected to the mouse. I I, I don't really know, but um, I find if I put both elements together, and everything is drawn. I mean, in Photoshop, I mean, you know, a line, um, a shape. It's all layers and layers and layers. So, it, which has also helped me in painting. Um, ironically, because now I see painting as layers and layers and layers of color. Even though I probably should have seen that originally, I didn't. Whereas originally it would be like just colors put together, you know, feelings. And now I, I kind of think a bit different, right? It's like the layering effect. Um, but I like the idea of, of adding texture to the Photoshop images. Because then I feel like it's my hand that's still a part of it, you know? as opposed to make a circle, fill it in, you know. And I do respect uh, the artists who are so perfect in Photoshop, who, who do animations. I mean, I, I'd love to do that as well. 
um, but I, I think I have to add my technique, and then and then it's authentic, and then it's me, and it's true. You know, then, then it feels right. Then I could say it's 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 art. You know, right. If that makes sense. It does. Well, it makes sense. Patty, Patty makes a, a really good point, though, about um, that somehow it seems very easy to use the computer, although. It takes quite quite a lot of time to, to master any of these Jigunda programs these days. And uh, but on the other hand, we really don't mind uh, an artist um, of a certain caliber using studio assistants to you know essentially do the same thing: paint in backgrounds or even paint almost entire you know paintings. Um, you know, recently we had uh, uh, Damien Hirst. Most of his paintings, his spot paintings, were painted by other people, and we really kind of overlook that. But yet, we'll criticize perhaps an artist that's using a computer to, you know, to add, um, to, to you know, quickly do something, to you know, sketch an area in or something. It's just a, like a little interesting bit of hypocrisy in there, I think. Hi, Susan. Did you hear that, Susan? Ah, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a glitch, and uh, I don't know what happened. It's technology. Yeah, so that was the question, really. Technology. <laughs> well, it would be much more fun if we were all in the same room. This is true. Um, you know, uh, but how lucky are we that we could even do this? So I think it's incredible. Right. Well, we're feeling our way gradually, step by step, forward, you know, inch by inch. Well, it's a new, um, it's a new adventure, a new journey for all mm -hmm. of us. Okay. Well, that. maybe that's a good time to bring things to a close. We've had, uh, I guess, our 10 minutes of time with Susan, who showed us his beautiful work, about 20 minutes of questions afterwards. So uh, Susan Shulman, thank you so much. <laughs> and I will put the screen share up, and then we will. Thank you. And broadcast. So thanks again, Susan. Thanks.